Let's take a look at the Skype for Business Backup service and how this operates within uh, the pool pairing mechanism. So what we see here on the left-hand side, we have pool one. On the right-hand side, we have pool two. And these pools are paired to each other. Pool one is paired to pool two. Now, pool one users store their data within pool one with their backend database. And likewise, on pool two, the pool two users, they store their data uh, in their respective backend database for their pool. Now, when we perform the... Um, pool pairing operation, a service that uh, gets installed called the Skype for Business backup service. The purpose of this backup service is to replicate data from pool one to pool two, as well as replicating data from pool two to pool one. This ensures that, as you can see here, my pool one users have a shadow identity, if you will, on pool two. And likewise, for my pool two users, they have uh, an existence here on pool one. These are not active copies, but these are uh, instances of the user's data so that in the event of a failure, we will be able to bring the users over to uh, the secondary pool. As part of this process, the replication will take data from pool one and replicate it to pool two, right, as you see here. And likewise, the data that's on pool two for these users will also be replicated over here to pool one. Now, in the event of a failure, pool one goes offline. In this instance, of course, as the users that are homed on pool one try to sign in, they will not be able to successfully sign in, and they will get directed over to their backup registrar, which happens to be pool two. Now, in that instance, they will be able to sign in, but they will be in reduced functionality mode. Obviously, at this point, the backup is terminated because we no longer have an opportunity to actually replicate data, and my pool one users are now going to attempt to sign in to pool two. But because we haven't actually invoked any type of failover yet, their data, that even though it exists here, it's not active yet. So the users will be signed in in reduced functionality mode. Once the administrator runs the invoke CS pool failover commandlet, this will then activate the user's set of data that is on pool two. And now my pool one users can sign into pool two with all of their modalities intact. Now, once we've solved the problem with pool one and we bring pool one back online, the backup service is going to want to resync the data. So obviously we have users here on pool one that have now been using the system. We have to synchronize their changes back over here. The backup service will take care of getting these copies back in sync. I can then do an invoke CS pool fail back, bring those pool one users back over here. And once these users have been established back on their home pool, the backup service will go ahead and start replicating the data back in the opposite direction.